have another one. Oh. I'm having another one, Paul. It's been a long time since I've been able to do something like this. Usually we'd have a standard introduction, but point is, Guardians of the Galaxy is actually pretty damn good. That is the angle of the video. Welcome to What Culture Gaming. I'm Scott Tilford, joined by Josh Brown. Hello, Scott Tilford. For the first time in 20 odd months, we are back in person. Um, and what better thing to talk about than a game that you thought, well, I thought was gonna be pretty damn terrible, but actually, it's really good. Now I was up till half two in the morning, I played a hell of a lot of it. Ask me stuff. I Ask just... me whatever you want, mate. Well, first off, I wanna know like exactly kind of like what it is. Obviously, there are gonna be so <laughs> many comparisons to the Avengers, which didn't go down particularly well, but no. this is a single player focus game, you play as Star-Lord only. How does the intro sell you on this being a proper I, different superhero experience? I don't think people are ready for the introduction of this game. Um, they should have put it in the marketing, they should have um, laid the groundwork a bit more solidly than they did. Um, the introduction to this is not that it's massively emotional necessarily, but they do nail um, it's a way more considered opening than something like the Avengers has had. It's more in line with the Spidey games. Um, you play as a young Peter Quill, you're just in, the, in your own bedroom as a 13 year old, experiencing the Star-Lord band for the first time or the latest album anyway right. and you're just sitting there it's in first person you get to listen to a bunch of music and, and just experience a 13 year old's bedroom lol in the best possible way um, and it just it reminded me a lot of me just being a sort of just being a teenager loving metal loving rock the soundtrack is brilliant um, and your mum is just sort of coming in and out of the room talking to you being a mum and it's just brilliant it's a really nice little grounding thing that made me really love Star-Lord so what you're saying is they made Peter Quill you they, they based it on your own they, history they bring in a lot of GTA Vice City style songs like uh, Flock of Seagulls Iran is in here Autographs Turn Up the Radio is in here um, Re Billy Idol's Rebel Yell is in here um, and the first time you go in the ship because you know you, once you get things get going uh, like I said Autographs Turn Up the Radio is uh, is on which is my favourite cheesy songs of all time <laughs> uh, it's a beautiful beautiful song and so yeah they like they have a level of narrative grounding that I think you know they had a bit of in the Avengers um, with uh, Kamala Khan but I think it just lands better here um, um, just mainly because, I mean, more so for me, I was like, I was that kid. I was the one telling my mum that things weren't cool, uh, or things were cool and she couldn't get it because she's a mum. Um, but having that sort of relationship with uh, with the mother character, and I think that stuff works really, really well. Um, and it sets up, it, it sets things up quite nicely for the level of agency that you have in the game, which is the biggest surprise. Yes. Because um, they showed a bit of it um, overall in terms of, you know, conversation options and stuff in one of the earlier trailers, but they really should have lent on that more because you are making decisions every sort of, like, two minutes or something, whether it's just dialogue stuff um, or little things where you'll make a decision and it'll pop up on the screen and say like Rocket Raccoon will remember this or like <laughs> the team will the team agreed with you or whatever um, already online there's some back and forth on just how impactful or how you know path branching that stuff is um, which I mean, I'll wait and see but it feels worthwhile it feels like you're a member of the Guardians that sense of humour totally works yes. when you're the one orchestrating those set pieces and those like gimmicks and you're the one replying to people and it just works in a way that I really didn't expect I thought it would be way more cheesy and thin than that it actually is. That is very exciting because when I saw the first trailer that obviously showed off those dialogue options mm. you know you get a slightly different mission between uh, Groot and Rocket Raccoon I was kind of wondering and worrying that it was going to be a Uncharted 4 style gimmick you know when mm. they introduced um, dialogue options in there which were nice but they didn't ultimately really change anything they didn't ultimately change the um, you know structured conversations mm -hmm. that you had but here correct me if I'm wrong it sounds like it does a lot to make you feel like part of that team which is ultimately what they're trying to do without yep. making you control all of the different teams. So members. yeah they have it so that like at any um, like loads of times it'll pop up on the screen that you have the option to reply to someone like when the opening mission I've played about two hours so the um, the opening chapter is you know you and largely it's you Rocket and Groot going on this mission whilst Gamora and Drax are supporting you from the ship and so um, you have a lot of banter there's constant talking and banter if you don't like Guardian style humour right. uh, which I go back and forth on I like the first movie more than the second one but um, there's constant banter between the gang um, and it just pops up on the bottom you can hit square you can reply to a lot of the conversations that are happening um, and you can you know choose to stick up for people or choose to have a, have a laugh at Rocket's uh, expense or whatever um, and it's just that thing where literally like playing a role in the way those scenes played out that we've seen in the movie so much and um, playing an active role in that and choosing the punchlines or choosing to like I said be more of like an active uh, participant in those sketches let's say comedy yeah. wise um, I really like I think it's really charming I think it really works works um, and it's really really funny um, 
and the combat is another thing where I wasn't expecting the combat to be as satisfying as it is. This is what I want to ask you about. Sorry mm. to interrupt, Peter. Bring I just it. kind of want you to lay it all out for me because when I was looking at um, gameplay footage, you know, I was looking at other reviews and they were saying that, yeah, the combat is maybe a little bit repetitive but ultimately satisfying. Mm. But when I was watching the footage, I didn't necessarily get that as an observer. I right. obviously haven't played it. So how does that translate into tactility well, in the moment? It has my, my one feature that no game can fail as long as it has this feature. It has an air dash, which <laughs> is one of the things that I always love. So yeah, you can do, you know, you can do double jumps, you can do air dashes, you have access to the whole Guardians gang, and um, you just hold L1, there's Guardians mode, which is like a slow motion thing, um, where you sort of, uh, you hold L1, you tap one of the face buttons, which is allocated to one of the gang, um, and then you press another button, because you have access to each, each person has a set of abilities. Um, but it's really cool, it's like, you know, Groot can lock people in place, Rocket has a big explosion thing, you can send in Gamora and Drax to do melee, um, and they sort of introduce them one by one, but then you do get access to the whole gang over time. Um, but it just feels nice and punchy, like you mm. do unlock the ability to do the Gears of War style active reload, where um, you know things are um, like a countdown will be on screen. You tap uh, the right trigger at the right time, and you get like a boost to damage. Uh, Solo sort of spins his pistols and keeps going. Um, but like I said, combine all those things together, calling in you know crew member specials, and everything looks gorgeous. It runs very well on the PS5, um, and you know and you're just sort of like whittling away at different health pools and stuff. It all comes together: the the double jumps, the air dashes. Um, you have a nice punchy melee as well, nice. um, which uh, if you keep connecting, you keep landing it on an, on an enemy that has enough health, um, Star Lord will start to do like higher kicks and bigger punches and like finishing moves and stuff, um, like a double fist punch thing, <laughs> uh, which just feels really, really cool. And you back all that with like a really cool soundtrack. Um, and I think it works. Like I think that I'm someone who's been very vocal about being manipulated by, you know, here's a song you love. Yeah. Um, but because Star Lord is so cheesy and he's into this band called Star Lord, which are very much a, a throwback to the likes of Autograph or Poison or Hair Metal from the 80s, um, and he's listening to their latest album, you get an absolute grounding point for who he is as a person, mm -hmm. and the self-aware like love that a lot of metal fans have for that entire genre, um, and it just makes it, it just makes you go with it. Yeah. Plus, like you can, you know, you can be a more wholesome Star Lord if you want. You can stick up for people more than you know taking the mick out of them if you want when those situations happen. Anyway. That's fascinating. So you know, in terms of uh, emotionality of the story, <laughs> do you get much of that from the start? I know you're not going to necessarily spoil whatever this opening beat is, but does it feel like there's a level of depth to the writing beyond the comedy, beyond the, uh, the quips, and beyond how you can um, mold your Star Lord to a certain extent? I think that's what they're going for. They haven't, like I said, that, that opening bit I really loved. It's not that it has a Last of Us style, oh my god, thing. Right. Um, it's more just that I think they nail um, the acting's really solid, the writing's really solid. It's charming in a way that I think it just it elevates it. Like I said, I didn't, I didn't like uh, Guardians 2 as much as Guardians 1, um, but it's just, it's very confidently written, and you know, they're pulling Drax and Gamora are the uh, comic book versions of those characters more so than um, Rocket and Groot. Uh, obviously, they look quite similar to the ones that were in the comics anyway, but point being that they're pulling from the comics to that degree. Um, and it's more the interaction between the gang. Like, it just, it's its not to get all meme gaming journalists, but it makes you feel like the Guardians. Because <laughs> um, it literally does. Um, but the thing that I really love the most, it is, um, it's that mix of constantly talking to the gang, going back to the ship, having those back and forths, um, you know, the level of production value that's here, um, the production, the, the performance is really good and the combat is just really really chunky and really satisfying yeah. and so I really like that one other thing is that um, when everybody if if the whole gang is down um, you can do a huddle this looks really cool yeah like so this sounds. is how you like trigger the songs um, I've only done one so far but it was that thing where when the entire gang was down um, you get the option to do a huddle it's like both L1 and R1 together it's like your ultimate I guess um, Star Lord puts the tape cassette in the air and, uh, and plays like whatever random song um, but that gives everybody a boost to their damage and their abilities they all come back and you'll you do the, the big heroic sort of fight back in the middle of a, a given uh, a bout or whatever. Um, and that stuff works really well. Like I said, they, they are leaning on that soundtrack, but as someone who's playing GTA 3 in San Andreas right now, yes, you are. I like a good old soundtrack. I think putting you know world-class, top-tier songs behind good action, yeah. um, it's quite easy to forget how good and satisfying that can be, yeah. obviously whilst being aware of the manipulation side of it. Um, but the Guardians franchise has always been about that. So it's Dude, like, I yeah. just finished playing another 75 hours of Death Stranding. I know <laughs> the perks of having a good good track behind whatever you're doing in the gameplay. Mm -hmm. It sounds incredibly surprising, to be honest, because, you know, like we briefly mentioned at the beginning, I was going into Guardians of the Galaxy with it barely being on my radar, and I think Same. that's probably the truth for a lot of people, mm -hmm. unless you're, like, the diehard Marvel fans or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's kind of just dropped out of nowhere. And then the reviews have been somewhat positive that you're coming away from the first two hours saying it's got this really positive positive start. That means nails its opening impression. Yeah. yeah, totally. And I guess just I want to... I'm, I'm interested to see where it goes from here, how it sustains that momentum mm -hmm. over the next next, you know, maybe 20 hours, 
mm -hmm. definitely it's, it sounds like a lengthy game. Mm -hmm. um, do you think it's going to nail that level of creativity um, across the board? Because I want to know in particular how mm. the levels are, because that was mm. the big immediate um, dif differentiator. Sorry, almost forgot my words. Uh, between that and the Avengers, you know, the Avengers, you were just in a bunch of drab um, yeah. warehouses and the regular old city streets you've seen a million times before. With the Guardians, obviously, you're this cosmic team mm -hmm. fighting on this massive scale across alien planets. Um, how is that sense of scale? Um, uh, Salty. That's one of the best uh, differentiable things, like you said, because in the Avengers, they just took what... Because all those maps had to work for every single character class, both now and going forward. Yes. So they became the biggest, blandest environments possible. Um, in this case, um, it's just a dedicated single-player game. There's not a whiff of microtransactions or monetizable elements or a live platform for whatever else that they're going to plug into it. It is just a single-player game. Um, I th the one thing that stood out to me, the level design, you know, it is, uh, I guess, sort of like corridor-based. You arrive in different combat arenas kind of like an Uncharted to some degree um, or kind of like um, God of War or whatever um, it does have the cardinal sin of we're going to make you go sideways oh. through the thing we're going to make <laughs> you crouch ever pet under the thing I know it's like balancing the air dash with uh, that thing and that made me realise that, or made me remember that it is on PS4 as well it is on last gen as well right. and so if you're designing these levels we're not at a point yet where developers either are or should make a separate next-gen version that could allevi alleviate those things right. because the newer systems could load instantly and you wouldn't need to have the shuffle. But for now, there's the shuffle. Well, that's a good point. I mean, you're playing on PlayStation 5, yes. I assume? Yes, yes. Uh, how, how is, how, one, how does it use the DualSense? Two, are there any particular next-gen features about it apart from the controller that you've noticed? Uh, next, uh, it's more just performance because right. um, some of the words, um, you know, commentary around the game during the rounds is that it isn't doesn't perform very well. I didn't notice a single hmm. problem with that. It was just nice it was burst smooth 4k 60 it was like that whole side of it was gorgeous the production value was sky high um i did get one sequence breaking bug right before i stopped playing at half two in the morning where um <laughs> i there was one cutscene playing out and it just i went to use a dialogue option and everything just uh, like flash reset and all of a sudden Stalo was just standing in the middle of the cockpit everyone else had disappeared and the person he was talking to that was on the hologram had also disappeared and i couldn't use any of the buttons so that was right. a very prominent sequence break but that was the first thing in about two-ish hours two and a half hours um in terms of dual sense stuff and um, the weapons are very punchy all you're using at the minute is star lord's pistols and um, you will get access to different elements um it's already on the skill tree yeah. um but when you nail the active reload when you hit it like halfway down the icon and he spins them and keeps going um that's got a big uh, controller punch let's say um, and that's very satisfying i mean one of the early bits has you competing with rocket on trying to shoot as many like alien sacks as possible yeah and so you're like going out of your way to like you know nail these different shooting combos and do that kind of thing as well all i'm saying is you know i don't want to um, push my agenda and all of these <laughs> but what you're describing in terms of the combat there you know the punch of the controller yes. the air dash the satisfying gunplay sounds a lot like Returnal sounds like, <laughs> like game of the year Returnal is all I'm saying maybe if they take an inspiration from the best oh, game of the year that'll be alright maybe if it was rem I mean it, this game's actually satisfying so it's not like <laughs> it's not like Returnal is it it feels oh, fair and worth heart. playing I mean at some point I will finish Returnal but it's not it, it is not this day in the words of Aragorn but it's um, I think it was him that said it I can't remember anymore but <laughs> Going to the galaxy, though, I think I'm mean, obviously going to keep playing it. We might um, put together some uh, more fleshed out thing. We'll check it. We'll cover it across the podcast. Please go subscribe to the What Culture Gaming podcast. And uh, and just overall, it reminded me so much of the uh, Spider-Man and Miles Morales. It reminded me so much of a curated um, creator first game. It was. It's the opposite of Avengers. Um, and Avengers single player was solid enough, but that game was just so hampered by what felt like corporate interests. Um, whereas this feels like they've just gone, oh, we messed that up massively. Yeah. Okay, you guys who know what you're doing we're just gonna let you make a game um, and they very much made a game and so um, yeah I'm pleasantly surprised by it I laughed I laughed out loud More, I laughed more <laughs> in the opening couple hours of this than I did for all of Guardians and 2 and I need everyone who's watching this to know how big of a deal that is Scott Taylor for <laughs> maybe the biggest critic I know of the Marvel style humour and quips so the fact that the humour worked for you mm. means I'll probably be rolling on the floor laughing well the beautiful side of it is that they don't do the whole sequence break Marvel comedy thing right. they just write like entertaining exchanges changes uh, between the characters and it just kind of works in that regard but they're not pushing it too much it's not the scene in Guardians 2 where Drax is just yelling the punchline at someone until they laugh which I know a lot of people like that stuff but that was the thing that made me want to disappear through the floor so um, <laughs> but
But in this case, it nails everything. I'm pleasantly surprised by it, um, and I can't wait to play more. But yeah, let us know what you think down in the comments below. Obviously, the game is out today, um, and let us know if you're going to be picking up or what you think so far, and if you trust this game after the absolute abomination that was the Avengers. For now, though, I've been Scott from WhatCulture.com. I've been Josh from WhatCulture.com. Hell yeah, he has, and we'll catch you next time. Bye. Bye-bye.